Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman. Uh, welcome to our, our wellness show today. I'm going to speak about a very interesting uh, subject, osteoporosis, thin bone. This is a very common problem. You know, I was a neurosurgeon for 45 years, and I saw a lot of fractures of the back and the spine and the wrist uh, from thin, brittle bones, which can be related to diseases, and also it's uh, part of the uh, aging process. Also, pa past menopause, women are more likely to get it. It's hormonally related. So let's kind of review this subject here a little bit. You'll find this very interesting. I mean, uh, basically bones, the skeleton, it supports us. You know, it, it helps us in movement and protects us. And most of your uh, blood cells uh, are made right in the bone marrow, in the, in the middle of the bone, yeah. Also, a lot of, not all of it, but a lot of your lymphatic system, your Army, Navy, Air Force that protects you, the lymphatic system, uh, are made inside the bone marrow, inside of uh, uh, the bone. Uh, and it has to do uh, with immunity then also. Uh, and uh, it's, it's basically bone generally is strong as steel, but, but is uh, light as aluminum, sort of uh, interesting. And the basic crystal is called hydroxy uh, appetite. That's the basic molecular uh, crystal. Like a, almost looks like a crystal of snow, uh, if you saw it under the um, uh, microscope. But but bone is living. It's it's not just uh, uh, it has it has nerves. It has blood supply. It has collagen. It's a living thing. It gets replaced. Uh, most of our bones actually through remodeling get replaced over a period of months and, and years. And every day we actually break a few little uh, uh, bones, although we don't realize it. Uh, you know, very small uh, little spikes uh, are broken. It's repaired uh, uh, right away. It's a, it's a living thing. We have osteoblasts, which create bone. We have osteoclasts, uh, which uh, remove bad bone away. Uh, and, and blood flows right through uh, the middle, even of our cortical uh, bone, yeah, and, and our daily repairs. Uh, our cortical bone, as I said, is a lot stronger. Uh, a broken wrist is the most common uh, osteoporotic fracture, incidentally, from a fall. Uh, uh, and uh, so the cortical bone, the outside covering, uh, is very hard and the softer part inside is called trabecular uh, bone. Uh, and 80% of the weight is on the, cort the cortex, the outside uh, of the uh, bone. The fundamental component uh, of bone is called an osteon. Uh, it, it really is, is a circle of crystals and has a hole in the middle, and that's where the uh, blood supply comes through and the nerve supply. Uh, so that's called the osteon. Uh, and that's where the nutrients and the waste are delivered and uh, taken away. Uh, and, and the bone marrow makes, the, um, as, uh, makes most of our blood cells, most of our lymphatic system. Uh, and that's what we, uh, with aging, we lose much more of that. Uh, and uh, most of the calcium in our body is located in the, in the bones and in, in our teeth, in, in our teeth. So uh, the basic uh, bone is quite strong. Uh, the calcium uh, that makes up uh, most of the uh, cortical bone uh, uh, and calcium itself it, it has to do with the strength of the bone. Calcium is also used in clotting of blood, nerve conduction. Your nerve conduction along the nerve has to do with calcium and sodium items. Yeah, kind of uh, interesting. Uh, it, it has to do with muscle metabol metabolism. And, and with the beat of the heart, calcium uh, has to do with that. So the, your calcium level, which is run very narrow in the blood, is extremely important. And it, osteocalcin is a hormone uh, that helps regulate bone. Uh, it's, it, it is secreted by the osteoblast. Uh, yeah, osteocalcin, it's a, that's a hormone, and it acts like a hormone. The pancreas uh, uses it to release insulin. This is kind of interesting. Uh, it's regulated, as you might suspect, by vitamin D. That's the reason we consider uh, vitamin D and sunshine so important. It also depends a bit on, the, on potassium metabolism. Uh, so the bone marrow, the inside, has to do with the metapoiesis, making uh, blood cells, white cells in the lymphatic system. So what is osteoporosis? It's thinning of the bone. The bone density goes down. 
uh, it, it's, as we age, uh, that, that increases, especially for women after menopause, because estrogen lays down bone. And with menopause, they, that goes down and osteoporosis, the rate uh, increases. And uh, so the, the bone is weaker and prone to fracture. Some of the osteoporotic uh, fractures that I saw occur spontaneously, no injury. And the patient comes in complaining of pain, say in the sacrum, uh, terrible pain, and we get an x-ray and we see a crack in the sacrum. Yeah, it occurs even, uh, even there. Uh, a fractured vertebra is, is common. Uh, and sometimes it's solid. You get an x-ray in somebody 90 years old and you see a whole bunch of vertebra squashed down. The patient never had any significant pain. Others will have this and have a terrible pain and it has to be uh, uh, treated. Uh, so uh, what are the symptoms uh, of osteoporosis? Loss of height. I used to be 5'11". Since I'm only 39, <laughs> no, I've lost an inch along the way, believe me. And uh, uh, usually no symptoms until you have a fracture. It can be a minor injury. It doesn't have to be major. It could be a minor injury. Uh, and uh, many of them spontaneous. They just happen. The majority of them have actually have no symptoms. They're found coincidentally while taking an X-ray uh, years later. Uh, and they can be... The, Generally, your bone density is checked with a DEXA scan, okay, DXA scan, uh, and, uh, and that measures bone mineral density, okay. In 1994, the World Health Organization uh, studied this and said in, in the, on a, when you do a DEXA scan on the hip, uh, you have to have 833 milligrams per two square centimeters and that would be normal. More than that is normal. Uh, if it's 833 to 648, they called it osteopenia, you know, lack of calcium. And then below 648, they called it osteoporosis. They ran these scans all over the world. Patients had these done. Uh, and uh, then they put them on a, a T and Z score, you know, scoring to determine uh, whether you are uh, one or two uh, off the medium score. And if you are up to a one, uh, and that would be 16 to 84 uh, percent, they, they were normal uh, if these are standard deviations. If it's one to two and a half, they then uh, called it osteopenia. And if you're beyond two and a half, they called it osteoporosis. Uh, so uh, this is how patients were checked to see if they had it. But there wasn't always agreement about this, okay? Uh, and uh, so people with low bone density, uh, osteoporosis, really were facing a lifetime of screening tests every year, doctor visits, drug therapy, but none of this was well tested. Uh, and later on, they found out more about it. In 1999, it was restudied, and actually 37% of the people in the U.S., 16 million, uh, uh, postmenopausal, we're taking uh, medicine for this to try to increase your calcium deposits. Yeah, they've taken a hormone replacement, HRT. Again, that hadn't been well studied. Uh, by the two, year 2000, it was the number one prescription drug. Everybody's taking it, but they found out the drugs are not without complications. And that really wasn't well advertised. So people were making a lot of money, but that wasn't well known. What did they find? Uh, uh, estrogen, for, for example, and uh, progestin, uh, they uh, studied that, uh, the Women's Health Organization studied that, and, and for 15 years they studied the people that did hormone replacement, they found increased heart attacks, increased strokes, increased blood clots, increased breast cancer, reduced colon cancer, uh, and the recommendation to take these medications was stopped. It wasn't doing any really good. Those original studies for bone density were promoted at the World Health Organization level by Merck, drug company. Interesting. Uh, so then they recommended uh, different treatments uh, using different drugs like Fosamax. And at the moment, there are about 10 million people on hormone replacement. Uh, this, and, and the sales doubled from 2003 to 2009. People are still getting complications. The question still is, do they really need them? And uh, uh, 
in a study by the Swedish uh, Council on Technology and Healthcare, and, and they uh, found uh, there wasn't really the people who had osteopenia, osteoporosis, uh, were difficult to distinguish from the people who did not have any of the studies uh, done, so it wasn't helping a lot of people. So a Dr. Susan Ott, OTT, she's a radiologist and orthopedic a doctor I think, from out west, state of Washington, I believe. Uh, she uh, started uh, studying it. Uh, and uh, uh, then we, let's give a few percent, percentages uh, here. At age 50, females, about 15% of the future develop a fracture. Males, only 5 to 6%. Uh, osteoporosis and the complications are about four times or so, 3.5 exact, uh, more common in women than men, partly related to hormonal changes. Uh, and, and all of us, uh, men and women, uh, peak in, in, in the amount of calcium in our bones at around age 40 and it starts declining, except women at a much higher rate than men, uh, much higher rate uh, uh, than men. Uh, uh, and uh, people are more likely to get a fracture, uh, ones who have poor physical function, who walk slowly, who are unsteady, ataxic, who are on some drugs whose complications are osteoporosis, uh, ones who trip on carpets, uh, on stairs, the ones who have trouble with visions are more likely to get a, a, a fracture. They st when they studied 150,000 uh, women postmenopausal, uh, uh, they uh, found uh, that 82% of them who had a fracture never had a, uh, a diagnosis uh, of low um, bone mineral density. Yeah, interesting. And, uh, uh, and 54 percent who had a fracture of that group had no osteoporosis. So you see the relationship between the study, osteoporosis and fracture rates, is not clear. And these drugs have side effects. You've got to know what they are. The British Columbia Office of Health and Technology studied it too. And, uh, and, and they found the BMD testing is unable to accurately distinguish uh, women at low risk versus high risk. Yeah, they studied it. So this, this really is in question. The Canadian Task Force studied it too. And they found widespread uh, bone mineral density screening uh, uh, was inadvisable at present. It was, in, it was inadvisable. The Washington Post wrote a big article in 1996. And they said the drug companies are hyping it, are hyping it. And some providers are hyping it because they get paid for doing the test. Then they start using the FRAX test, F-A-R-X test, uh, a, a, a fracture assessment tool, and they base it on your, your age, your weight, previous fracture rate, whether you're male or female, your height. Bigger people have less fractures because they impact the bone more, they're bigger. Uh, even overweight people tend to have a less fracture rate because the weight uh, itself helps lay calcium down. It takes more to hold them up unless they have diabetes and vascular disease, then the rates actually go up. People with rheumatoid arthritis, people who drink more than three drinks a day are more likely to have osteoporosis. Uh, and, they could, and the uh, U.S. uses the FRAX method, and, and, and uh, the U.S. uses the NOF method, and the Europeans the FRAX method, and they compared them uh, and found that uh, of the U.S. ones, uh, we were treating a good 48 percent, but the, the benefit was hard to fathom. Uh, and the, in, in Britain, they treat very, very few and don't seem to have increased fracture rates. So the DEXA scan, and this is Susan Ott again speaking, uh, the DEXA scan uh, measures bone quantity but not strength. You don't really know how strong it is. So the test, it, it takes more than that to tell bone quality. You gotta know the crystal size, the mass, uh, the, the, the trabecular, uh, the, the micro cracks, the bone marrow. It takes all that information to give an estimate how good bone is. So you see it's complex. Uh, you got to know the vitamin D level of the patient, how much vitamin K uh, they're, they're uh, taking. Uh, and, to, and to estimate who's going to get a fracture, you need to know the, the ratio. Incidentally, whites get many more fractures uh, than blacks. I noticed uh, reviewing studies in Africa 
uh, that there were tr uh, black tribes uh, who had a very low osteoporotic fracture rate. It was almost non-existent. So I think it has to do perhaps with vitamin D and consumption and uh, of other mit mit minerals, strontium, for example, what they're eating, the type of diet uh, that they're following. Uh, medications uh, uh, have, have been uh, used and of some value. Uh, estrogen, they found to be a valuable, but some of the biphosphamates have a lot of complications to them. They've not found to be then uh, that valuable. Susan Ott, frankly, didn't even recommend them at all, except for vitamin D, and, and she had a narrow window of, of estrogen that she recommended, which we'll discuss later. People who have a sedentary lifestyle, uh, don't exercise, uh, they have a higher osteoporotic uh, uh, rate, as already uh, 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 mentioned. Force tends to uh, deposit calcium, so people who exercise more. I notice uh, some gyms I attend, I see some, some women uh, jumping a little bit. And, uh, you know, if you can do it safely by holding on, not, not high, just a little bit, just to get some force into your bone structure. Uh, some weightlifting, for example, will reduce the osteoporotic rate. That's uh, very interesting. And as we uh, get a little older, uh, so you can see how much important, uh, you know, exercise uh, is. There is something called ages. They're a combination of sugar and protein, advanced glycation products, uh, and they tend to deposit themselves in bone and cause osteoporosis. They also deposit themselves in the brain and cause dementia. They also deposit themselves in the joints. Uh, and, and they're much more common in type 2 diabetics who have a lot of sugar floating around uh, in these ages uh, form. So the relationship between blood sugar, osteoporosis, uh, atherosclerosis, uh, is a cycle linking them, frankly, together. When there's calcium coming out of the bone, uh, it will combinate, it will join these ages and deposits itself inside your heart. That's why they get the calcium score today. Remember they speak about the calcium CT score? Give you some idea how much uh, calcium is being deposited in, in your heart. Meanwhile, your bones are getting osteoporotic. So there's an interplay between the two. Uh, and glycation is this combination of sugar and protein to form advanced glycation products which can deposit themselves all, all over the body and they're not removable. They're there for life. So when they do a calcium score, you get some idea uh, that you could have been eating the wrong food. It also leads to increased rates of dementia, increased rates of atherosclerosis. And as I mentioned, what about treatment? We use drugs. Uh, uh, vitamin D is important. Uh, and for some, uh, estrogen and, 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 to, and they but remember before, taking a hormone therapy can be dangerous, but they found in that 10-year postmenopause period, if you use uh, not progestin, just estrogen in that period, uh, you can uh, stabilize the bone situation uh, after, uh, after menopause, uh, but there's still the, inc the lower rates of heart disease, but you do have higher rates of strokes and lower rates of cancer. So th there's some risk in taking these drugs and then beyond uh, the 10-year period, they shouldn't be taken at all. Uh, so, but to take some, especially natural vitamin D, get some sunshine, uh, get that tested, I think is, is important. They found strontium, another mineral, has been studied and could be taken as a, a supplement. Uh, that's not commonly known, but I found that in the literature. Uh, and, uh, and remember what I said, menopause, leads to osteoporosis because of the reducing the estrogen, but the replacement of therapy hasn't worked out too well. You must review that with your doctor very carefully as you know the potential side effects. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and I already discussed with Susan Otset about the 10-year period uh, from 60 to 70 uh, where you could take some estrogen, but not estrogen and progestin because of increased rates of heart attacks, cancer, strokes. Uh, uh, and uh, DHEA is a uh, very uh, strong uh, hormone. Uh, good in, uh, uh, in humans can be of some value, but you check with your physician 
look up the literature before we tell you anything. Vitamin K is helpful because it, it, it has to do with calcium metabolism and, and blood clotting. You get it from Brussels sprouts, kale, cabbage, dark greens. So vitamin K is, is, is quite uh, 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 important. Let's speak about other trace minerals a little bit uh, and, uh, and speak a little bit about my experience a little bit uh, as a neurosurgeon where I saw a tremendous amount of fractures of the spine, many spontaneous. Some people would have just one after the other. They now can, with a needle, put in some bone cement and raise that up, and that's done at the hospital, uh, at uh, uh, Lufthansa Hospital, for example, and g can give a lot of pain relief. And, and uh, I saw a lot of that, and it, and it clearly uh, has value. Uh, a lot of fractures occur in the sacrum. They even do it there occasionally, and I found that to be of value. But the, the most valuable thing is prevention. Exercise r regularly. Maybe do a little impact thing if you can do it safely. Let's see that your bones get used to a little bit of pressure. It's more likely to put things down. Watch it. vitamin uh, uh, D levels uh, being very uh, uh, important. And to eat a more nutrient-dense way of eating because you'll pick up uh, much more calcium there than milk drinking is not a good source of calcium. If you want to read about it, uh, read uh, Key On by Whitewash. It's right, right in there. Uh, the milk uh, drinking does not uh, produce good bone health, contrary to what everybody is thinking. Get your calcium uh, from vegetables, from vegetables. That's the healthy way of uh, getting it. So, uh, and some trace minerals, magnesium, silicon, boron, can, inf can improve uh, your uh, bone uh, health and, and, uh, uh, and use them uh, perhaps uh, in a vitamin or uh, in a, a drink. I use a little drink every morning. I, I drink it down in water, you know, in, in water. Uh, and uh, curcumin, cuirstin. important for bone health, vitamin B6, vitamin C, they, they all uh, help a bit and should be taken in micro. Uh, so let's talk about diet and osteoporosis. Uh, osteoporotic fractures are, are relatively rare in Asian countries. Yeah. And so when we speak about uh, uh, Asian women, for example, they, they can have a pretty good rate of osteoporosis, but they do not uh, have the fracture rate, they have half the fracture rate uh, that uh, American white women uh, get. We were mentioned African Americans uh, have less of a fracture rate. So uh, Western countries consume, that consume the most dairy foods have the highest rates of osteoporotic fractures, highest in the world. Now you see them advertise, the companies advertise that milk uh, is the way to prevent osteoporosis. It happens to be wrong. And I told you the, the book to read. And uh, it's, it's a milk myth. It's a milk myth. myth. And you've seen the advertisements for it. It's, 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 it's a myth. And uh, uh, there was this case study carried out by the American Journal of Epidemiology, a uh, controlled study of risk factors for, for hip fractures in the elderly. And they said, they said, consumption of dairy products, particularly if you drank them, see, at age 20 years, was associated with increased risk of hip fracture in old age. Interesting. There's the evidence. There's the evidence. And uh, Amy Lanhau, PhD, Nutrition Director of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine in Washington, D.C., said the countries with the highest rates of osteoporosis are the ones where people drink the most milk and have the most calcium in their diets. Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? Highest milk drinkers, highest fracture rates. And when you read the book I asked you to read, you'll see uh, milk does other things to you, including the casein. Uh, I know Dr. Rule, a pediatrician, calls it liquid meat. The, 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 the uh, uh, sugar in it also uh, can cause a, a, a problem. So uh, the calcium lye, Robert Thompson, MD, okay, bone is composed of at least a dozen minerals, and if you focus exclusively on calcium supplementation, you're likely going to worsen your bone density and can actually increase your risk of osteoporosis. You know, 
he published a paper, paper on that. Overconsumption of calcium in the, goal, in the goal of preventing osteoporosis creates other mineral deficiencies and imbalances that will also increase risk of heart disease, kidney stone, gallstones, osteoarthritis, hyperthyroidism, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Interesting. Get it from food. Get, get it from food. Take the vitamin D. Uh, and that. Foods that are high in calcium include fresh dark green vegetables, spinach, kale, turnips, collard greens. Kale, our friend. <laughs> and uh, beans, sesame seeds. Sesame seeds it probably is a food with the highest amount of calcium. So take some sesame seeds and sprinkle it on your salads. That would be very healthy. Almonds and uh, rhubarb, okra, all high in calcium. And uh, so... Uh, uh, broccoli, bok choy, almonds, pumpkin seeds, okra, collards, artichokes, gooseberry, onions, uh, spinach, uh, Swiss chard, dandelion greens, mulberry, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, sesame seeds, all full of uh, calcium. So we like to keep our body uh, in alkaline balance. So let's speak about acid and alkaline balance here a, a little bit. When the blood becomes uh, slightly acidic, Okay, acid. It's a very delicate balance. It doesn't take much. You know. uh, uh, alkaline calcium is leached from the bones, the roots of city. So if you're a big protein meat eater, for example, you make uh, your blood acidic, uh, the body has to keep it at this 7.34 level. It, it will leach calcium out of the bone to, to balance it and makes you osteoporotic. Big time meat eaters d develop osteoporosis. That's been well known for many years. So, fruits and vegetables are predominantly metabolized to alkaline by carb, so that quickly can throw it back into uh, a balance. And uh, proteins and cereal grains are metabolized to acids. Got it? The more protein people consume beyond the body's true needs, the more acidic the blood can become, and more uh, osteoporotic you will become, more likely to have a fracture. And uh, and here's a study by Dawson Hughes, 2009, from the Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. He studied 171 healthy men and uh, women. And uh, he said, increasing the alkaline content of the diet by eating more fruits and vegetables should be studied as a safe and low-cost approach to preventing osteoporosis and improving bowel health in older Americans. So it's very important to eat a nutrient-dense, okay, because of the vitamins, the minerals, the 25,000 phytochemicals, chemicals you find in plants, if you eat this way, it will make your bones strong. If you're a big time steak eater seven days a week, uh, you're gonna get osteoporosis. That's well known, I saw it in my practice all the time. So healthy alkaline foods, al alkalinity is what you want. Vegetables, root vegetables, organic grains, beans, seeds, and some vegetable oils, although oils can be 100% fat, and if you get a weight problem, I wouldn't do too much of that. Consume moderately fruits, wheat, nuts, hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, walnuts, fish, fats, coconut milk, sunflower oil. That depends a bit on your general health. Uh, if you're seriously overweight, you may not want to eat, for example, a lot of fish. You gotta know where it's come from. Is it from a farm? Is it from the ocean? If it's from the farm, it has a lot of omega-6 fats on it that are pro-inflammatory. So you got to be a little careful about that. Unhealthy acidic foods, we mentioned again, we'll bring it up again though. Meat, poultry, fish, milk and dairy products, bread, nuts, cat, and uh, fats, butter, corn oil, margarine, alcohol, even coffee. You mean I get, get to give my coffee? I don't think so. I exercise a lot eat essentially an 80% vegetarian diet, a uh, high-dense, nutrient-dense diet, so I don't think I need to do that. Uh, but if you have a severe osteoporosis problem, you might think about it. Alcohol, uh, three drinks a day, leads to osteoporosis. And steroids are a big producer of it. And that's quite, uh, 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 can cause osteoporosis. And it can also cause aseptic necrosis of the hip. I saw it recently. And uh, uh, my, ba my banker, a young, young lady actually, uh, was, was uh, given steroids for some joint pains, uh, which probably sh shouldn't have been done because, because um, 
she had had a gluten problem. It was a gluten problem. And I told her that a year ago, <laughs> just visiting her at the bank, but she didn't have a check. And she started eliminating gluten from her diet. But what happened, then uh, she was put on uh, uh, steroids. She developed uh, aseptic necrosis of the hip, osteoporosis. It broke, uh, never healed, and now she has an artificial hip. That operation works great. It was done at Lutheran's, wonderful job. She walks really good, but still, she's quite young. And that could have been, you know, could have been avoided. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, what is, I mean, osteoporosis, really? I mean, what are we uh, speaking about here? We're speaking uh, to, to avoid it. We, we all get some of it. Almost all of us get some of it from, from getting a, a day on. Uh, and, uh, but it has a lot to do with lifestyle. And what, what I've uh, also said is that uh, this, this body mass index testing probably leads to a lot of unnecessary treatment. I didn't say not to do it, uh, but uh, be a little open-minded about it. And if you decide you're gonna take some medication, uh, know the side effects, all the side effects, and, and weigh the risk. You're not having any trouble, and, and you don't have type 2 diabetes, and you exercise regularly, and you're eating a nutrient-dense uh, uh, way of eating, uh, then, uh, you know, you might not consider doing it. But if you've had a fracture, then I think I'd see a specialist and see uh, if you need some supplements, check your vitamin uh, check your vitamin D, get yourself exposed to sunshine to get the real natural vitamin D, uh, and... Uh, uh, and at the calcium level, checked in your bones too a little bit to see if anything, you have any other uh, uh, problems. And you can look at some websites here too, uh, cashmanhealth.com, uh, to uh, learn quite a bit about eating properly. If you got type 2 diabetes, I have it on there. Uh, also, uh, to get rid of that, early testing for that. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in summary, Exercise uh, regularly uh, and don't trip, fall down. You walk the stairs, hold on the uh, railing, uh, and maybe try to get a little impact to your bones, maybe some light uh, weight lifting. Eat that nutrient dense diet, maybe 80, 80% uh, of vegetables, and uh, be careful about the meats uh, you select. And you could, you could avoid this the majority of the time, uh, and but don't just respond to your x-rays or just to your uh, mineral bone testing. Uh, go on, how are you doing? How am I doing? And check the side effects of uh, everything. Then watch some of our other wellness shows, the schedule of which you'll find in cashmanhealth.com. You can go to YouTube. I've got 77 TV shows in there. Uh, fat, salt, sugar, marijuana, narcotics, every subject you can dream up. And, and education. We lack knowledge. I learned a lot during this lecture myself. We lack knowledge, so develop some knowledge about this. Go online, look online, uh, and uh, uh, you will uh, learn a, a great deal. Uh, that's how my banker found out a lot of her stuff besides me. I didn't see her as a patient. She educated herself online and speaking to me as a, as a banking customer, and, uh, and she uh, saved herself. She's doing quite well at this, this uh, time. And, uh, if you have any questions, attend my lectures. I, if you look at resources on cashmanhealth.com, I give two lectures a month, one on diabetes, one on some other interesting health subject. And we, we lack knowledge. E educate yourself. And, and I, I, I'm a ferocious uh, reader. So we all need to learn about if we develop a medical condition. And most things are stoppable, preventable, uh, reversible. Cancer is preventable 50% of the time, for example. I, I teach uh, that. Yeah, it, it's, and I don't see it brought up that much, but I, I think it's a, a, a big one. So uh, I wish you good bone health <laughs> uh, uh, in, in, in the future. Uh, and uh, especially, you know, as getting a day on, make sure that the rugs and the carpets and the, that you don't have slippery stairs or too short of a stair, have a look at it. Now look at your house, especially if it's a relative living with you that's elderly, parents, for example. Uh, go through the whole house and look at it in terms of fall risk because that's the most common uh, cause of an osteoporotic fracture and the most common one, remember what I said, it's in the wrist. 
uh, it's, it's in the wrist. So you can, uh, put, because prevention, prevention should be at the top of the list. Because if one fracture starts, odds of another fracture, uh, you know, probably around uh, 30%, and, and you don't uh, want to uh, have that happen. Because some of these can be, uh, uh, especially in the spine, can result in some paralysis or the pain be severe sometimes, all the pains go away usually after time, that involves a trip to the nursing home, especially the hip fractures. And once you reach the nursing home with a hip fracture, many people stay there permanently. So we want to avoid this. We want to avoid this through proper lifestyle, through proper diet, evaluating your homes, uh, for potential falls, and, and don't do foolish things like get on ladders uh, to clean out, clean out the gutters uh, in the house, for example, a fall from there. Uh, I, I guarantee you a high risk of a compression fracture at any age, but I guarantee it almost, if you're 70, 80 and you fall off a ladder, you're gonna have a broken back or hip. I would almost uh, guarantee it. Uh, and. Uh, so wellness is, is a, a, a big, uh, uh, something really on my mind. Actually, you won't believe this, 83% of type 2 diabetes can be totally avoided uh, by proper nutrition. 90% of uh, vascular disease, 50% of cancer can be avoided by proper nutrition and lifestyle. So anyway, thanks again for listening to me. Listen to uh, our shows. We're on twice a week, 7 o'clock Mondays. Uh, channel 56 in Wednesday, 7 o'clock, channel uh, 56, and then look at cashmanhealth.com uh, where uh, additional lectures I, gi I give at uh, Lutheran Hospital, my headquarters there, on a beautiful auditorium, uh, t twice a month. Uh, they're free. They're free. Come up front, say hello, uh, and join us uh, in a group of uh, uh, wellness uh, and uh, thank you very much for uh, watching the show. We love you all, but love is action. <laughs>